Hi there, this is Ethan Tapper, the Chittenden County Forester, and I'm here today to answer another one of your questions. So this question came from Erin uh, Talmadge, her, whose son asked her, um, or said, we should plant more trees to help with global warming. And his questions were, uh, is planting more trees a good idea? And if so, how do we know which ones to plant? And so there's a lot of really important uh, and interesting things to talk about related to this. Probably um, the most important of which is the role that trees and forests play uh, in the context of a change in climate. So one of the biggest things that we hear about all the time, right, is the role of carbon dioxide in warming our atmosphere. And when our climate changes, it changes in all these different ways. It's not just warming, but it causes all of these different effects. And so forests globally are actually uh, can be uh, part of the solution to this problem in that they suck up carbon from the atmosphere. So when trees are growing, they uh, absorb carbon dioxide through the air and they release oxygen out into the air. That carbon that they suck up, among other things, becomes wood. Um, and so the trees that are in our forest are these big blocks of just stored carbon. So that carbon is in the tree, it's not out in the atmosphere, uh, causing problems. Forests also sequester a lot of carbon. And surprisingly, most of that carbon is not in the trees. It's actually in the soil. So when that carbon from the trees, the trees die, they fall on the ground, that carbon gets broken down and decomposed and turned into organic material in the soil, the soil in Vermont, we think, stores about 60% of all the carbon in the entire forest. Only about 30% of the carbon in a forest is actually in living trees. So when we're thinking about managing our forests in light of a changing climate, we want to think about how to both maximize the amount of carbon they're sequestering, the amount of carbon they're, they're sucking out of the atmosphere, and then also maximize their ability to store carbon. So we can do this in, in a few different ways. One thing we can do to maximize carbon sequestration in our forests is to keep our trees growing really healthily. So in general, we know that younger trees, trees you know about 30 years old, are sequestering carbon more rapidly than older trees. So they're basically just uh, growing more quickly uh, and so they're absorbing more carbon from the atmosphere. And then we also know that older trees and older forests are storing more carbon. And so we want to strike a balance between both of those things. And so if you've watched my other videos, you know that um, I will always say that it's really, really important to have diverse forests. And that doesn't just mean forests with a lot of different tree species, like sugar maple and oak and yellow birch and white birch and stuff like that. It also means different sizes and ages of trees. So if we have some areas of younger trees, some areas of older trees, we will be both capturing the, the benefits of these young trees which are sequestering carbon very rapidly and these older trees and older sections of forest which are storing a lot more carbon. With all of our tree species, if we help them grow more quickly, uh, an individual tree will sequester more carbon than if it's growing more slowly. Um, so doing some thinning around the trees, helping trees uh, alleviate trees from the stress of competing with their neighbors can also help an individual tree sequester more carbon. Another thing that we can do to manage our forests in light of a changing climate is to manage forests that are resilient. So resilient forests are just forests that are able to respond to whatever comes their way and maintain their natural processes and stay healthy. And what we know about resilient forests is that, again, they are diverse. And so uh, managing for a diversity of many different tree species and many different sizes and ages will help them be more resilient to whatever uh, disturbances climate change sends our way and the miscellaneous stressors of climate change, changing temperatures, changing climatic variables, natural disturbances that are increasingly uh, frequent and increasingly severe, all of these things will be buffered by having a forest which is really diverse. So if we've managed our forest to be all a single tree species or all a single age of trees and a windstorm comes and it kills all the trees, blows all the trees over that are in the overstory of the forest and there are no trees in the understory or the midstory of the forest, there's just sort of that overstory monoculture, suddenly all of that carbon will be released. But if you've been managing for many different sizes and ages and species of trees, you're buffered from any one disturbance affecting your forest in that dramatic way and leading to the release of carbon. Now moving on to the part of this question, 
talking about planting trees. Now in Vermont, we are blessed with these incredibly uh, resilient forests that just by creating an opening, just by uh, letting some light go on the forest floor or creating some sort of a, a disturbance event, just by creating space in the forest, uh, it leads to this incredible uh, abundance of natural regeneration. And we get all different species of regeneration. So I'm standing here um, in an area that I cut in 2017 where I created a lot of light and a lot of space. And what I'm now seeing three years later is raspberries and blackberries and yellow birch and white pine uh, and American beech and witch hazel and all of these other red oak and all of these other different species which just respond to a disturbance by just growing. And what happens after this is that all these trees will, will grow very quickly. They'll all compete with each other very aggressively. Um, some of them don't really grow for a long time. So raspberries and blackberries will probably only be here for five years or so. And then their sort of moment uh, in the development of this forest has passed um, and they will die back. But these tree species will continue to, to compete upwards towards the sun. In Vermont, we don't really have to plant trees um, because in most cases, just by creating an opening, we're gonna create all this amazing regeneration and we don't have to worry about it. We wanna grow a diversity of different tree species and we wanna grow forests that are these complex, diverse, irregular systems. We're not just trying to grow a single species of tree. And so we create the conditions, the regeneration naturally happens and away we go. Silviculture is just sort of the way that foresters manage forests uh, through largely creating these disturbance events to achieve desired results. And so in many cases, all we're trying to do is just to create a healthy uh, bunch of new trees growing in an area when we're doing a harvest like this. In other states, they may be very dependent on the planting of trees. So in the American Southeast and in the Northwest, a lot of their forestry is driven largely by what are called plantations. And so this is basically people planting trees in rows like a crop um, and harvesting them on very quick rotations, so maybe 20 or 30 years. Uh, in Vermont, the trees that we're growing now probably won't be ready to harvest for at least 70, 80, 100 years. Um, and so they're growing them on these very quick rotations. Uh, the drawbacks of that is that their forest is not diverse. Um, and so they're not providing a lot of different types of wildlife habitat and they're not really uh, managing for these sort of resilient forests um, which will be able to provide many different things. They're really just uh, growing those, those trees as a crop. That said, even in, if in Vermont, in our forest, we don't really need to plant trees, there are opportunities to plant trees in other places. So um, in agricultural fields that are now abandoned, in some cases, planting trees can be uh, the only way to help the fields revert back to forests without getting just completely invaded by some of these invasive exotic plant species like honeysuckle and buckthorn and multiflora rose that are now really, really abundant in our region. Um, in my county, in the Champlain Valley, a lot of these fields will just, if left to their own devices, instead of regrowing into these natural diverse forests, they'll just regrow into this monoculture of invasive exotic plants. There's also opportunities to plant trees in other places, like in our communities, um, in our city parks, and all of those trees will sequester and store carbon. Uh, another thing that's really, really important, and this is in Vermont, this is probably the most important thing, more important than planting trees, uh, is ensuring that we still have forests. So forests that are able to grow trees, that are able to sequester and store carbon at the same time that they're cleaning our air and cleaning our water, providing habitat, uh, for our wildlife, uh, the biggest threat to our forests uh, is probably, in addition to climate change um, and invasive exotic plants and some of these other factors coming down the pike, is probably forest loss. And so what forest loss is, is where you take a forest, this incredibly complex system which is providing all these amazing services, uh, and you convert it to something else. So you convert it to a place where there's a house or you convert it to an agricultural field or you convert it to a shopping mall or something like that, those areas will never sequester and store carbon again. Um, it's essentially permanent. And so you've lost the potential benefits of those areas uh, ostensibly forever. 
And so in Vermont, the biggest, most important thing is that we keep our forests forested so that they can continue to sequester and store carbon. So the last part of this question is thinking about um, what tree species to plant if you're gonna plant a tree, let's say in your yard or by your school or in a park. And what I would say is that use a native species of tree, a species of tree that's, that's native to Vermont, and look in the woods around you for inspiration. So let's say you're in an area and there's a, a lot of white pine and the white pine all seems really healthy. Well, maybe that's a good tree species to plant. Or uh, maybe there's an area with a lot of red oak and maybe the red oak seems really healthy. Well, maybe that's something that we should uh, realize that that's telling us something about that site, that it's a site where red oak can be really happy um, and plant that instead. Um, there are also some really good resources that you can find online about native tree plantings. Vermont has many native tree species that provide all different kinds of things and so uh, plant native trees and plant a diversity of native trees. Like in our forests, managing our streets or our schoolyards or our parks with only a, a single species of tree in mind is going to make it more vulnerable to the effects of climate change, the effects of natural disturbances. An example of that is the emerald ash borer, which is now affecting many of our ash trees and in the future will probably kill a lot of our ash trees. Um, and on many of our city streets, we planted green ash everywhere. So now, instead of having a small problem where we have a few different trees that need to be removed with the threat of emerald ash borer, we have many different trees that need to be removed. Um, and so planting a diversity of native species is not just going to provide better habitat for birds and wildlife and things like that, it's also going to provide a more resilient yard, uh, urban forest, schoolyard, park.